Hi everybody and welcome back to another installment of Tim's Tech Corner. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a review and a comparison on a Google Nexus 7 compared to a Samsung Galaxy 2 7 inch. Mostly this review is going to go ahead and deal with the Google Nexus 7. I'll have a separate review on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7 inch. Start off by giving you a little bit of specs on the Google Nexus 7. If you've watched my channel uh, before, you'll see that I've worked with a Nook Color, also an HTC Flyer. This has got to be my favorite 7-inch tablet at the moment. Uh, Asus has really produced a quality uh, tablet in this particular one. It's, it's fantastic. It's quad-core. It's an NVIDIA Tegra 3, and the this tablet is lightning fast. I really cannot say enough good things about it. There are one or two cons for it. I'll go ahead and deal with them first since they're very small and very quick. It's a 7-inch tablet. I have it here in a smart case that swivels. Uh, if you close the case, the device will shut off, and this particular stand over here is a swivel case. I really like that. If you look up here, you'll see we have the power button and the two volume buttons. If we look at the bottom of it, we have the headphone jack and we have the power supply. And that's pretty much it. The only two cons for this device that I have are the fact that the storage in this device is non-removable. So you have the version that you get. And that's it. If you get a 16 gigabyte version, that's all that you're going to fit on here is 16 gigabytes. The only other negative that I have about this particular tablet is over here. Take a look at this. This is the headphone jack. Here's the power. So if you have the device in its tall mode, you've got the headphone jack on the bottom don't really understand what Asus was thinking of on that particular thing. I, I do know some of the iOS devices, they have it down there. The, the iPod Touch has got the jack down there. But I don't really understand that. I, I don't know why you would put a headphone jack at the bottom of a tablet. If you have it sitting in a charger and you want to plug in something to it, you, you have to try to deal with that headphone jack being down at the bottom of the tablet. Here, here's the tablet in this orientation. So it seems to me it would make more sense to have the headphone jack up here. And pretty much every tablet I've ever really seen, especially the 7-inch ones, they have it up here. It just seems more efficient. I, I don't really know what Asus was thinking of for that one. The, the Transformer Pad series, um, they have it in the proper spot, so I don't know why they did that for this Google Nexus. That's pretty much it that I have for the cons or the negatives about this device is the orientation of the headphone jack being at the bottom of the tablet and the fact that the storage is set and it's not removable. Honestly, I believe all tablets at this point in time should have SD cards, uh, have SD card slots in there and, and make them removable because we do have cards that are coming out now that are 64 gigabyte. So the storage is, is getting pretty big. This screen over here is a widget lock screen. It's not the standard one. It's got, I have the battery over here. I have weather, as you can see, it's butt ass fucking freezing here in Raleigh. And there's even an advisory in effect. And uh, unfortunately, I have the original unlock here and the one dedicated to this particular application. So, as I said, this cover and this device has a smart cover. So if I was to just close it, the device would shut off. And if I were to open it, it would turn on. So this home screen over here, I have a weather widget and I have a thunderstorm live wallpaper. For the rest of this review, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch wallpapers for you as I can understand that this would potentially be getting um, a little distracting. So we'll switch over to the cyanogen mod selections just 
for this video as the, the flashing is going to screw up the camera a little bit. I have the, as you can see here from the launchers, we have the standard Jelly Bean one, which is Trebuchet, and I have an Apex launcher. Apex was what was built into this particular ROM. We'll go ahead and deal with that. Look at this flowing from screen to screen. Look at how fast this is. Swiping is, is amazing. Battery drain on this device is amazing. Charge is quick, and battery drain is very slow. The original ROM that I looked at, which was Jelly Beer, uh, when I was looking through his ROM list and his uh, specifics, he had mentioned that Live Wallpaper was out and Live Wallpaper Picker was out. And I posted to him, I said, how come you took out Live Wallpaper Picker? I, I would think that Live Wallpapers, I mean, I get, but why did you remove the chooser? I have a lot of Live Wallpapers that I love. And... Um, he just said he did it in favor of battery drain. He felt that live wallpapers were a battery killer, so he didn't want them in the ROM. And um, I kind of disagree with that heavily. I think that as a downloader of somebody's ROM and as a user, you should have that ability to choose what you want. And if you don't want to include live wallpapers, that's fine. But to remove the picker and remove that as an option... I disagreed with, so I went with this particular ROM. We'll get into that later. So uh, I got a calendar widget, news widget, and a, a task one that's also pulling in from the calendar. Uh, one thing I don't like about Apex Launcher is, of course, it removes the four dots that you often see to get into the app drawer. So you kind of have to include your own icon for it. So over here, I have Apex Menu, Apex Settings, some Google Apps, Settings, App Drawer for the notification bar. So I'll show you a little bit about the tablet for this particular ROM, standard Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage. If you go to more, you will see that the Nexus 7 supports near field. And you have the ability to transmit apps to other devices. Lock screen, theming options, system, Sound, display, storage battery, profiles, location, security, language and input, backup reset, your accounts. If we come over here to About Tablet, you'll see it's a CM10, which is a Jelly Bean ROM, Android 4.1.2. We have a Franco Kernel, Cyanogemod Glaze Jelly Bean version 2.0. This is the ROM that I'm using. And it's an October 11th build date, Jelly Bean build number. Rooting this device was god awful simple. Holy shit, if you have a Nexus 7, you have got to root this device. 12 monkeys in 12 cages could bang out a root for this device in about 13 seconds. This was the utility that the guy wrote. For this and there'll be a link in the description it was so amazingly simple the most simple rooting of a device that i've seen since i rooted my droid eris years ago with a one touch apk an actual android app that you put on the phone you touch it you had root this device was that simple no crazy flash modes and his utility is is completely amazing and Ironically enough, I had loaded it on a Windows 8 tablet that I had. Well, a Windows 8 Lenovo ThinkPad that you can convert into a tablet. And I'll be doing a video on that one, too. Plugged it in, got the USB connection, uh, had a reboot once because there was a little bit of a problem with that port. Rebooted, detected the device, ran the utility, told it to do the all-in-one of rooting, installing Cyanogen, um, and uh, Clockwork Mod and all that stuff. And it was rooted. It it was so amazingly simple. It was great. And then I got this particular ROM on here after I decided not to go with Jelly Beer because of the live wallpaper picker. So I'll show you guys real fast what an Antutu looks like on this device. I'm using the AI type keyboard. It is pretty cool. Um, not one that I hate. And it, it's one that's pretty solid i think i like super keyboard the the most so far and look at this antutu score 11k 316 and let me show you where this ranks 
compare to today's devices. So obviously, as you can see from my HTC Flyer video, the Galaxy Note 2 still the leader, HTC One X, Galaxy S3, bang. There is the Nexus 7 currently ranked above the Transformer Prime and the original Galaxy Note. And let's take a look at where the strengths are in this device. You can see here the light blue is one of the stronger ones for this. Pretty solid. And if I remember correctly, that's the 2D graphics. Oh, actually, I take that back. CPU flow point 2D or the green. So pretty solid device. First one that I've owned that's capable of beating this Transformer Prime. When I had originally gotten my HP touchpad, that Transformer Prime held the first slot for a long, long time. So this one has taken over for where I had my HTC flyer. So I use this kind of a, as a go-to 7-inch and also as a nightstand. So I've got a couple clock apps on it, um, some sound ones. Xbox Smart Glass. I forget if this particular device was one that Smart Glass would work on. Basically, I got Smart Glass on one device where it would install from the store, and then I used Titanium Backup to package it up and get it onto some other tablets. For this one, it goes from apps to download it and then scrolls to widgets. So this, that's a little bit different where most of the others have apps and then have widgets. There's the 3D weather clock that you saw on my home screen. Here's some audio control ones. And, and as you can see, look at how fast this flipping is going through. There's no lag. Audio manager ones, battery backups, some of the Google ones, contacts, eBay, Dropbox and Drive, ES Task Manager, Evernote. Love that application. I've got it on every device I can stick it on. Google Tasks, and look at this movement. It adjusts the positions of, of apps that will get in the way. Um, Night Alarm Clock, the Photo Gallery, Play Store, Sound Search, Tasks. Uh, use this little weather app on my HTC Flyer. There's weather that is getting used on the lock screen, and there is widget locker now, which is what was controlling what was on my lock screen. This is a really good app because this allows you to customize your lock screen almost as much as you customize your, your home screens. I'll go ahead and uh, lock it again. So that's what's controlling this. That's where I have the battery, I have the weather. And that's also what's controlling that ring over there. So here is a Google Nexus 7. It, it really um, want to give a couple shout outs to a few people. The person who does the root for this device, uh, I believe is MS Kips or something like that. The link will be up in the description. The name escapes me now because I rooted it a little while ago. Uh, also, this glazed jelly bean rum is very good love it performs great there's not a lot of kernels that support overclocking uh, quite yet so this device is not overclocked but you won't you really don't need it it's fantastic it's smooth it's got the butter improvements it's fast um, also for the seller that I got this on an eBay the seller was all tech wholesale I've got one other tablet from them before and I've gotten this one I got this for about 150 bucks, about $50 cheaper than you see it in most places, and it listed the condition as used, moderate wear. I opened the box, and it was immaculate. I could not believe how amazing the condition of this device was in. It's like I brought it home from Best Buy. So if you see that seller on eBay, All Tech Wholesale, and this is a shout-out to them. They have no idea I'm doing this. It's not paid or anything like that. They... Um, check out their listings and they, I've found them trustworthy they have tended to underrepresent some of their devices so we're coming to a close now we're in the last 10 seconds I hope you enjoyed this review of Index 7 up, set, up next will be a Toshiba Excite and the Galaxy Tab 2 with the IR Blaster in it take care <laughs>